Court of Appeal. Nietzsche, in The Antichrist, voiced the strongest argument not merely against theology but against metaphysics, that hope is mistaken for truth, that the impossibility of living happily or even living at all without the thought of an absolute does not vouch for the, le the legitimacy of that thought. He refutes the Christian proof by efficacy that faith is true because it brings felicity. For could happiness, or more technically speaking, pleasure, ever be a proof of truth? So far from this, it almost proves the converse. At any rate, it gives the strongest grounds for suspecting truth whenever feelings of pleasure have had a say in the matter. The proof of pleasure is proof of pleasure, nothing more. Why in the world should true judgments cause more enjoyment than false ones, and in accordance with a preordained harmony, necessarily bring pleasant feelings in their train? But Nietzsche himself taught amor fati, thou shalt love thy fate. This he says in the epilogue to the twilight of the idols, was his, was his innermost nature. We might well ask whether we have more reason to love what happens to us, to affirm what is because it is, than to believe true what we hope. Is it not the same false inference that leads from the existence of stubborn facts to their erection as the highest value, as he criticizes in the leap from hope to truth? If he consigns happiness through an idée fixe to the lunatic asylum, the origin of a more fati might be sought in a prison. Love of stone walls and barred windows is the last resort of someone who sees and has nothing else to love. Both are cases of the same ignominious, ignominious adaptation which, in order to endure the world's horror, attributes reality to wishes and meaning to senseless compulsion. No less than in the credo quae absurdum, resignation bows down in the amor fati, the glorification of the absurdest of all things before the powers that be. In the end, hope, wrested from reality by negating it, is the only form in which truth appears. Without hope, the idea of truth would be scarcely even thinkable, and it is the cardinal untruth, having recognized existence to be bad, to present it as truth simply because it has been recognized. Here, rather than in the opposite, lies the crime of theology that Nietzsche arraigned, without ever reaching the final court. In one of the most powerful passages of his critique, he charges Christianity with mythology, the guilt sacrifice in its most repulsive and most barbaric form, the sacrifice of the innocent for the sins of the guilty. What appalling paganism. Nothing other, however, is the love of fate, the absolute sanctioning of an infinity of such sacrifice. Myth debars Nietzsche's critique of myth from truth.